This week's episode is sponsored by LastPass. Check out the link in the description to free yourself from the frustration of password management and stick around to the end of the video to hear more from this week's sponsor. What's going on internet? IG back again today. Here's a scenario for you. You've got an old PC, or maybe you've got an old laptop, or maybe your friend or your mum or your grandma. It's kicking around and not doing a whole lot. Each Windows update brings a whole new host of issues. So it's time to look for a lightweight alternative. Well, today I'm gonna jump into Peppermint OS, an operating system I have not looked at in years. Peppermint OS 9 came out in, back in June with the long-term support release of Ubuntu. So I thought now is a good time to jump in. It's been a hot minute since Ubuntu LTS came out, but let's jump in and take a look at what this lightweight distribution has to offer. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, first of all, I just want to say that in the recording of this video, I've turned off the, the recording of the mouse cursor. Uh, so when I click on something and you can see my mouse highlighting stuff, but you won't be able to see the, the cursor. And this is because I found a bug in recording setup that I'm using temporarily right now. Okay, moving on. Uh, Peppermint OS is a very interesting beast. Now, I've, uh, I went into this video with, with two minds. Uh, it was at first going to be a comparison video uh, to try and find a really good lightweight Linux distribution that could really showcase just how light you could get a Linux distro. And, uh, and it turned out that, that Peppermint OS had so much to offer and had been uh, so highly recommended by so many people that, uh, that I decided that it deserved a video in and of itself. Now, there are a lot of other great lightweight options out there, but I think what Peppermint does is quite unique. Now, some of the strongest competition in this space that, uh, that would still, I, in my opinion, deserve a bit of a comparison, let me know if you're down for this in the comments, would be uh, Linux Lite, maybe variants of Puppy Linux uh, and stuff like that. And obviously you've got the, the standard uh, Zubuntu, Lubuntu or XFCE and LXDE versions of popular distributions such as Manjaro or, uh, you know, stuff like that. Okay, so let's talk about Peppermint OS. Now, Peppermint OS uh, has built a bit of a reputation in terms of being an incredibly lightweight base, but then also uh, with an ethos of trying to keep the application set lightweight as well. Now, what I mean by that is that when you go through the menu of Peppermint OS, a lot of the applications that you have installed uh, are simply um, packaged up websites that are designed to kind of kind of interact with your system as if they were an app. For example, Office. You've got a bunch of the links here to the online Microsoft Office suite as well as Google Drive, Google Calendar, and Gmail. Now, the little tool that does all of this work for you is definitely available outside of Peppermint OS, but they utilize it very, very well. It's basically a way to sandbox a web app into a, uh, into a single window without having all of the extra uh, Chrome, if you will, around the... Uh, around the, the window. So for example, we go into Google Drive here, it's gonna open up a, a Mozilla Firefox window, but as you can see, when it's loading up, it doesn't give us any controls to try and, uh, you know, back or forward or the address bar or whatever. It very much handles the, uh, the website as if it were its own application. So what that means is that uh, not only are you not wasting any of your screen real estate, which, in terms of where this OS shines the best, think about the, the old netbook that you might have lying around, um, a small laptop, that kind of thing. Screen real estate is of the utmost importance and being able to uh, have a tool which turns websites into uh, apps that you can have in your menu and launch with a keyboard launcher and that kind of thing is all pretty handy stuff. Now, um, as you can see, you can also uh, use uh, you can also use this tool to uh, customize which web browser you're wanting to use um, as the back end to provide the back end. And, uh, and as you can see here, out of the box, Peppermint OS packages up a couple for you, but obviously gives you the option to add your own as time goes on. Now, to me, this is a really interesting approach. It's almost, uh, it's very similar to uh, Chrome OS in some ways, but then again, Chrome OS has its own function. 
uh, that uh, comes at the expense of a lot more system resources. So Chrome OS, obviously, with a lot of their uh, web apps, you can run them uh, to a degree offline, whereas these apps, not so much. They are simply a wrapper for the uh, for the website. OK, so that's kind of covering uh, one side of things. But on the other side of things, you also do have um, access to all of the software that you would have in a standard Ubuntu uh, distribution. So, and actually they give you a bit more than the standard Ubuntu distribution because there are two software managers, count them two. So uh, to me, this was a little bit confusing at first and I couldn't quite understand why they went with two, um, but then it does make a little bit more sense uh, the further you dig into it. Now, as you can see, we have two different software managers here that are doing the heavy lifting. First of all, we have the Linux Mint software manager, which is the one displayed front and center right now. The Linux Mint software manager is, uh, is, is undergone a lot of great work by the Mint team. And it's great to see that Peppermint here is capitalizing on that and using it uh, in their system. Now, what this software center uh, does well is it gives you some, uh, it gives you ratings and especially ratings from all of the Linux Mint community makes it a lot easier to, uh, to find the sort of software that you're looking for. And, uh, and also it gives you a little bit more details than the standard GNOME uh, than the standard GNOME software manager does. However, the reason behind still keeping the other standard GNOME software manager here is uh, to enable Snap and Flatpak support. So as you'll know, on Ubuntu-based distributions, it's very easy to enable Snap packages. Uh, and so they are available here in the GNOME Software Center, but on the Linux Mint Software Center, you have access to all of the Flatpaks. So again, out of the box, you've got access to a vast array of software. Now, the brilliant thing I think that Peppermint does is the less is more idea. And that is that by uh, offering a distribution that has very little overhead out of the box, and also the apps that are required to actually run the distribution in terms of the settings uh, panel and the menus and all of that kind of stuff are also very lightweight. You get a system that's going to be lightweight for the long term, not something that feels lightweight when it's fresh out of the box, but then the more apps you add to it, the more it slows down. Um, I gotta say this thing, like you've, you've actually got to use it to, uh, you've actually got to use it in, in person to experience just how snappy it is. Now, when it comes to uh, what actually is going on here, technically speaking, uh, it's a bit of a hybrid between LXDE and XFCE. So the Peppermint team judiciously pick and choose which elements they want to use that will provide the most amount of functionality for the least amount of bloat. So case in point, if we go into the Peppermint Control Center, you can see they've kind of got their own custom mix of, uh, of what to use here. So you can choose uh, what window manager you want to use, uh, the theme of that window manager. You've got settings for keyboard and mouse, keyboard shortcuts, you can enable what kind of desktop effects you would prefer. And a lot of this stuff is borrowed from XFCE, but at the same time, They've swapped out some of these XFCE components with LXDE components to try and uh, again trim the fat a bit even more. So this uh, dialog box, for example, I believe looks very much the same, if not identical, on an LXDE based distribution. So again, you can cu uh, customize things like the theme here. So if you're a fan of, let's say, the Numix icon set, then you can very easily enable those. Customize mouse cursors, fonts, that kind of thing uh, from this panel, which is borrowed from from LXDE. So I will say they've got a great selection of icons and themes available out of the box. And that's always nice to be able to play around with stuff like that when you're customizing a lightweight distribution. Now, just to give you a bit of context in terms of uh, what this is running on, this is running inside a virtual machine, but I've only given it uh, two processing cores and two gigs of RAM. And, uh, and you can see despite that, uh, when it comes to opening up apps and loading things up here, it's honestly, it takes quite a bit to, uh, to trip it up, even given those, uh, those limitations. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen VLC open that quickly on anything ever. Now, again, to those of you who run a, a minimal window manager on top of Arch Linux, good for you. Of course, you're gonna be having a much more efficient desktop, but this is something that you could uh, very easily and quickly load up onto an old machine and breathe new life into it and uh, repurpose it for another use or to another friend or family member. 
So it's very easy to see what this distribution does well, but the question comes, well, what, what does this distribution sacrifice in order to get there? What do you have to give up in terms of functionality to get there? A lot of it, I believe, boils down to, uh, obviously, eye candy. You can give or take that. But also when it comes to interconnectivity between uh, like more complex network setups where you're uh, managing different file shares and that kind of thing, those sort of things usually take a little bit more tweaking to get happening the way you want them to. Oftentimes, uh, just to trim the fat, things like Samba printers, uh, online account integration, all of this kind of stuff is going to be dropped in favor of a lean and mean desktop environment. Now, while it might take a little bit more fussing around than what, uh, than what you're used to, uh, you still actually have access to uh, Samba inside uh, inside Peppermint. You just have to use a slightly more antiquated tool than what a lot of desktop environments have built into their file managers. Uh, in terms of the file manager, you are using, I believe you're using Nemo uh, as opposed to uh, Thuna or the default one in LXDE. So you do get quite a full featured file manager here. And I think if I was to pick up on a trend that Peppermint OS definitely delivers on throughout its operating system, it's the fact that the team at Peppermint have made very judicious choices in terms of what they should trim the fat on and what they should keep as fully functional. That's why this distribution has come so highly recommended to me throughout uh, multiple people commenting on different videos. The fact that this distribution gives you such a lightweight base, but at the same time doesn't really limit you too much in terms of what you can do on this system and what you can do to the desktop environment. You still have a lot of customization here under the hood, but the way that it runs out of the box is more than capable for what most people want to do on an old PC or on an old netbook. If you just want to browse the web, uh, check your emails, do some office documents, this is going to get amazing results out of some old antiquated hardware. Again, let me know what you think about this distribution and I'd be curious to see if you have any other suggestions of what would be a good comparison or a good alternative to something like Peppermint OS in this space. Because honestly, I think Peppermint OS for, for me right now and the ones that I've experienced in the last 12 months is probably taking the cake already, but, uh, but Linux Lite is also a very popular uh, option and is worth probably checking out as well. Before we get out of here, I wanna introduce you to this week's sponsor, LastPass. LastPass is a fantastic password manager tool that remembers all of your passwords so you don't have to. It allows seamless login to all your favorite websites without even typing, giving you extra time to do the things you actually enjoy. There are browser extensions for pretty much every web browser under the sun, and you can download the apps on iOS or Android to sync up your passwords to your mobile device as well. Not only does LastPass free you from the frustration of having to remember passwords, it also can store forms, credit card info, addresses, all of that fun stuff with industry leading encryption so you can seamlessly shop online and log in and out of the sites that you love across all of your devices, only having to remember one master password. So before you switch distros again or get a new device, definitely go and download the LastPass app or grab the browser extension from the link in the description. And special thanks to LastPass for sponsoring this week's episode. Well, that'll be all from me. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what was the first lightweight Linux distribution you ever tried. And I will see you all in the very near future. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.